I'm Audrey Grant. And I'm David Lindau. We're going to talk about filling out the convention card. When you and your partner sit down to play in a club or tournament game or play online, you're expected to have a convention card. This lists the partnership's bidding and defensive carding agreements. The card is theoretically for the benefit of your opponents. When you sit down to play against another pair, they are likely to be unfamiliar with the methods you're using. Most items won't come up during a couple of hands that you play against to pairs, so the convention card. The opponents can look at it at any time if they want to know about your system, and they can also ask questions if anything is unclear. Filling out the card, however, is usually beneficial to your partnership. You have to know exactly what your agreements are, and this can lead to some interesting discussions. You might find the partnership is on different wavelengths about some bids. Time to straighten things out. Here's what the card looks like. And you'll notice that a lot of it's in black, but there are also areas in red and blue. The items in black basically indicate the standard agreements that you have. They're the ones that you don't need to warn your opponents about when they come up because they're what most people play. The items in red are non-standard agreements, and those are the ones that you have to alert your opponents when they arise. We'll talk a bit more about alerting and how to do it later on. The items in blue are somewhere in between. They're somewhat standard, somewhat conventional, and the basic agreement these days, especially if you're playing online, is that you need to alert your opponents to those items also. So let's take a look at the card piece by piece. The first thing on the convention card is the general approach. The best known is the ACBL standard yellow card. There are other standard agreements. You might agree to play two over one. We're going to introduce you to Grant Standard. This is what is played in most duplicate games today. The first main area of the card itself we're going to look at is no trump opening bids. You're the dealer, what would you open with this hand? You've got 16 high card points, a balanced hand, you only have two little hearts, but probably most people would open one no trump. If that's the case, you're probably playing a range of about 15 to 17 points. You'll notice there are two lines on the convention card under the one no trump opening. Some partnerships have different ranges depending on the position at the table, whether they're in first position or fourth position, sometimes based on vulnerability, whether or not they're vulnerable. But for the most part, you simply fill out one of the lines with your general range. What would you do with this hand? You're the dealer. This is a little more controversial. You have 14 high card points. You can add a point for the five card diamond suit. Or you might upgrade the hand because you have three tens. Although this section doesn't indicate that the range is stated in terms of high card points, most players assume that is the case. To be on the safe side, you can indicate the range as 14 plus to 17 if you would open that hand one no trump. And that lets the opponents know that you will occasionally open one no trump with as few as 14 high card points when you have something extra. How about this hand? Again, you have a hand in the range for opening one no trump, but you do have a five card major. The popular style though these days is to open one no trump anyway. It avoids you having a difficult rebid problem if you start with one heart. So people like to open a no trump even with a five card major. And so there's a little box to check off, five card major common when opening one no trump. This time, north opens one no trump and east passes. What's your call? If the answer is two clubs, the stamen convention, then you're playing stamen and you're asking if partner has a four card major suit. You can check the appropriate box. This is the first real convention. And notice that it's in black. You don't have to make 
any special announcement because it's so common. What if you have a hand like this? Just a couple of jacks and a six card suit and your partner opens a no trump and East passes. At one point, people would just bid two hearts, drop dead. That's where I want to play it. But the modern style now is most people play two diamonds to tell their opening partner to bid two hearts to get the contract played from their partner's side. And the technical term for that is a Jacobi transfer. And so if you play that, you would mark on the line. You'll notice it's in blue. So you have to alert it when you're playing online. So two diamonds is a transfer to hearts. And if you're playing two diamonds as a transfer to hearts, you're probably also playing two hearts as a transfer to spades. So you check off the boxes there. With this hand, your partner sitting north opens one no trump. East doubles. It's your call. If you bid two hearts, expecting your partner to think that's a transfer to spades, then your agreement is basically that you've ignored the double. When they double, you're going to play the same methods, stamen, transfers, because they haven't taken up any bidding room. So on the convention card, you would mark where system is on over a double. That takes up a little much room writing double, so typically an X is put on the card to represent the double. Now again, North opens one no trump, and this time East overcalls two clubs. This is your hand. How does that two club overcall impact your bidding? The popular style is they haven't taken up enough room to make a mess of your convention, so we can still bid two hearts as a transfer to spades. So what that means is that we keep our system on even if they overcall two clubs. So we can still transfer the one little difficult part there is what if you wanted to use stamen? Well, most people double their two club bid saying, that's what I would have done. I would have bid two clubs, so I'm doubling. And otherwise, if they bid two diamonds or two hearts, that's still a transfer. So your system is on whether they double or overcall two clubs. If they overcall higher than two clubs, things become a little more complicated. So we won't get into that right now. But you just bid pretty much what you're looking at if that's the case. Yeah, the standard agreement is that it defaults to just everything's natural. If they overcall two diamonds and you bid two hearts, that's hearts. Mm -hmm. Now here's a weak hand. North opens one no trump, east passes. You really would not like to play this contract or have your partner play it in one no trump. So what do we do with this kind of a hand? It's a good hand to discuss with partner when you're filling out the convention card. A popular approach is to do an extended form of transfers and use two spades to tell partner, I want to play in a minor suit at the three level, two spades requests that your partner bid three clubs, and then you'll pass if your suit is clubs, or as in this case, if your suit is diamonds, you'll correct to three diamonds. So that gives you a way to play in a minor suit by using two spades. So there's an area on that for the convention card and where it says two spades, you'll say that's a relay to play in three clubs or three diamonds. Partner opens one no trump, east passes, and this is your hand. You have seven high card points and two points for the long diamond suit. You'd like to invite partner to be in a game if partner has a little extra. Let's see where you fill this out on the convention card. Three diamonds. So if you play that a jump to three clubs or three diamonds shows a a decent six card or perhaps longer suit and it's invitational, then that's where you'd fill it out on the card. You'd have to alert your opponents that that's what it meant. Three clubs is clubs, invitational. And partner can either pass or carry on to game if they think they can make three no trump. And that should give you a way to handle those types of hands. Now this is a good hand. Partner has opened one no trump and East has passed. 
You have values. As a matter of fact, you might even want to bid quite a bit. Maybe you can even get to slam. How do you describe this type of hand to your partner? What call are you going to make as south? One popular approach is to jump right to three hearts as a forcing bid showing interest in slam. Basically, you're setting the trump suit as hearts and saying, partner, I'd like to pursue getting to slam. So you might get into cue bidding and things like that after this. So if that's how you play three hearts and three spades, and that's a fairly standard way of playing it, then you'd mark that three hearts and three spades show a six card or longer suit and they're forcing to at least game and presumably showing some slam interests. You probably want to fill out your range now for um, an opening to no trump bid. Sometimes you get a hand like this, 20 points. You'd like to describe the hand to your partner and two no trump does this really beautifully. It says, partner, I have a balanced hand and I have 20 or 21 points. And that's where you fill your values in right in the right hand part of the section on no trump opening bids. And presumably, if you're playing two no trump as 2021, you probably still play your transfer bids, Jacoby transfers, and you play stamen. There's no box to check off. It's just assumed you play regular stamen unless you have some special agreement about something else. So that's probably all you need to fill out here that the two no trump is 20 to 21 and you're playing your Jacoby transfers. Okay, let's move on to the next section on the convention card, which is major suit openings. You're the dealer. What call do you make with this hand? If the answer is one club, then you're playing five card majors, the popular style in North America. An opening bid of one heart or one spade promises not four, but a five card or longer major suit. Now you might wonder why there's something for first and second and third and fourth. Well, suppose you have this hand and it goes pass, pass. If you're playing five card majors strictly, then you would have to open this hand one club. But partner's a passed hand. Probably you're not getting to game. You might end up in a competitive auction and partner might end up on lead. So there's quite a number of players who would open that one spade. So if you would occasionally open a four card major suit in third or fourth position, that's what the second line is for. Now we come to responses. This time you're the responder, your partner opens one heart, east passes. It's your call. You like your hand, you have support for hearts, you have 10 to 12 points, and so you make a three heart raise. Let's see where you put that on the convention card. So there you mark that your double raise, your raise from one to three rather than one to two is invitational showing, as Audrey said, about 10 to 12 points. Partner can pass if they've got a minimum opening bid, otherwise they can go on to at least game. Here we have a similar hand. It goes a heart, but the right-hand opponent our east over calls one spade. Now what do we do? We could, of course, still bid three hearts and meaning that is a limit invitational raise. However, the opponent's over call has given us some other options. We have a double or we can bid the opponent's suit. And nowadays, most people use the bid of the opponent's suit, the Q bid, to show a limit raise or better. Why do they do that? Well, suppose you have a weak hand and it goes a heart, a spade, the auctions become competitive. And the modern style is toward treating a jump raise now as preemptive. So you would jump to three hearts with this particular hand. You only got five points. And you fill in the convention card after an overcall, you check weak. Now it's interesting, this is in black. And that means you don't have to announce it. This is considered standard bidding. Now we have a hand like this. 
one heart by our partner and pass by our right-hand opponent. We have 13 points. We can't bid two hearts, our hand's too strong. We can't bid three hearts, that would show a limit raise with about 10 to 12 points. Now, you could just bid a new suit, but I think Dave's going to tell you about a particular convention. If you want to know more about it, you can go to our site. What is very popular with the hand where we want to be in game opposite partners major is to use an artificial bid of two no trump. This is referred to as Jacoby two no trump. And basically it says, partner, we want to get to four hearts at least, maybe slam. I've got a good fit with you and an opening bid or more. There's all sorts of conventional rebids and responses after that. And the interesting thing about this is that the two no trump bid doesn't mean at all that you want to play in no trump. It's a convention. And that's why it's marked on the convention card. Your conventional raise is two no trump. It really means your conventional forcing raise is two no trump. So you would check off that box if you play Jacoby two no. And you can go to our site for more details on that convention. This is a very interesting hand. One heart by your partner, pass by your right hand opponent, by east, and this is your hand. Again, you know that you want to be in a game, you want to play in hearts, and you'd like to tell your partner as much as you can about your hand. This is where you could, are you ready for this? You could jump to four clubs. That's referred to as a splinter bid. Now, it's hard to know where the name came from. David and I were talking about it, and he said, well, splinter is something very small so when you jump to four clubs you don't have very many clubs you have a single and or maybe no clubs and what does this tell david about your hand and why do some players use the splinter bid well it tells partner basically you've got four card or longer support for partners major you have a hand that values is enough for game after all you've only got 11 high card points here, but you're adding three points for the singleton club because you have four card support. So your hand's worth 14 points. So it's a very limited range. It's enough to go to game, but you do have club shortness. And it just might be that partner's interested in slam. If they know if they've got three or four little clubs and no wastage there, they might want to go on to slam. So it's a very descriptive bid. And it's also very much getting in the way of the opponents. Maybe they were considering bidding spades. It's awfully hard to do that once we as South bid four clubs. Again, saying to partner, going to game, have a singleton club or avoidant clubs, what do you think? More about that, go to the website if you're interested in it. It's on the convention card. Now we come to a much more complicated decision. Your partner opens a spade, the next hand passes, what are we going to respond with this hand? Now, I know what we want to say. We really would love to mention those hearts. We have six of them. And this is probably where one of the most common bidding errors comes in. In some methods, you could bid two hearts with this. It's forcing, but you might not play it forcing the game. But the common approach is that if you bid two hearts, we're going to game almost all the time. And if you play two over one game forcing, going to game. So you can't afford to bid two hearts with this hand. So what's your only alternative? You have to respond one no trump. Now it'd be very sad if partner left you in one no trump when you really would like to be in hearts. So the popular style when you're playing that two over one would be game forcing is to play that one no trump is forcing. That way you'll get a chance to show your hearts when partner makes their rebid. Not everybody plays it forcing, and in fact the most common style now is actually to play it semi-forcing. And that's a good way to play it because that means if you forgot, <laughs> then you could say, well, partner, we were just playing it semi-forcing, I thought. So if you pass your partner one no trump response, then there you go. Supposing you're the dealer and you pass. West, your left-hand opponent, also passes and your partner opens the bidding one spade. Your partner is in what's called third position or third chair, and your partner might have 
a weaker hand than just 12 points. Your right hand opponent passes and now it comes back to you. Now, one of the problems here is that in third or fourth chair, partner can often open with fewer than 13 points as a sort of more tactical bid. So if you start jumping to three spades, you might get the partnership too high. And also if you respond in a new suit, partner might just pass. They're allowed to do that once you're a passed hand. So what most people use these days is they use two clubs as an artificial response to a third or fourth seat opening of one of a major to say, partner, do you have a real opening bid or just opening for just for the fun of it? And that's called Drury. So it's a, an alertable convention. You would check it off. The popular modern style is reverse Drury. What that means is that when your partner opens a spade in third or fourth position and you bid Drury, two clubs, do you have a real opening bid? Your partner rebids two spades saying, no, I don't. I've got a minimum opening bid or less, so let's just play in part score. Although this is a useful convention, it's also forgettable. So you don't need to play Drury, and if you don't, you can just remove the check marks, and if you do decide to play it, you can put them back in again. This is what you like to play. Now we go to the segment Minor Openings. Take a look at this particular hand. You're the dealer this time. What call do you make? Now, if the answer is one diamond, then you are playing the popular North American style of five card majors where you open the longer minor with no five card major in the hand. The opening one diamond is a natural non-forcing bid. A partner could pass with fewer than six points, even when short in diamonds, but this doesn't happen too often. A one club or one diamond opening actually is more likely to be made with a four, five, or six card suit than it is to show a three card suit. Partner, however, is aware that it can occasionally be made on as few as three cards, and this is indicated by making the convention card look like this. Now suppose you have this hand and your partner opens a diamond and it goes past. You have a hand which is an invitational hand. You've got 10 high card points and one extra point for the five card suit or for the doubleton spade, 11 points. So you'd like to show that. You can use the same style as you use over major suits, and that is to make a limit invitational raise by jumping to the three level, three diamonds. And if that's your what your agreement is with partner, then under the responses, your double raise is invitational, just as it is over a major suit. And now look, the next example in it involves your partner opening one diamond and east on your right over calling one spade. You have six high card points. It's a weak hand. You have five diamonds. What's your call? Three diamonds. If you would jump to three diamonds after the overcall, then you would fill that in on your convention card. And you see it says after overcall, and we're checking weak. Also notice that it's in black, so there's no need to alert that, that would be considered standard. And that's the same way that you play over the major suit because you have the qubit available to show an invitational or stronger hand. Now, we need a forcing raise. Let's take a closer look at this. Partners opened one club and east passes, and this is your hand. You like clubs, don't have a heart stopper. Hmm. The problem with standard methods here is that if you've agreed that your jump to three clubs is only invitational, what are you going to do when you want a forcing raising clubs? Over the major, you use the artificial two no trump, but that's not what's used pretty much in standard today. Two no trump is natural. So really, you don't have a forcing raise in standard methods. 
and quite a few people go along with that. You'll usually have something else you can do. For example, with this hand, well, you can respond to diamond. You're never really planning to play there, but wait to see what partner does, and then you'll make sure you get to game after that. If you do respond to diamond with a hand like this, you know, your partner could bid hearts after that. So you probably will get to a reasonable game just with uh, standard methods, pretty much bidding what you see. Now the forcing raise, we should look at it. It's in red, but J diagonal S means a jump shift in the other minor, and you can fill that in. But that's what that J slash S means. It means a jump shift. Or you could play uh, inverted minors. That's what a single raise would be. But for now, we'll just leave that blank. As we said, if you're playing with a partner and you haven't discussed this, then just find your way through when you have a forcing raise. Don't do anything artificial. Just bid a new suit and get the partnership to gain. One club by north. East passes. You have six high card points. This is an interesting hand. You have four hearts and five diamonds. So what response are you making after the one club opening bid by your partner? If you would respond one heart, ignoring the five card minor suit, you have to fill this out on the convention card to let your opponents know what you're doing. And it says that you frequently bypass, the four plus stands for four or more, and that black diamond stands for diamonds. So you frequently bypass four or more diamonds. And we're going to suggest that that's probably a good idea on many hands. How about this hand? Your partner opens one club and it goes past and you have six high card points, enough to respond. You also have four clubs. So one possibility is you could raise to two clubs if you're playing that a six to nine or 10, but most people would respond one no trump. So if you would respond one no trump, your range for a one row trump response to one club is six to 10. Some people prefer it's a little stronger, but most people nowadays would play it six to 10 no trump response over a club or a diamond. And this is a very attractive range when you take a look at what we're suggesting in, in Grant Standard. It's very easy to remember because take a look at this particular hand. You have 11 high card points. North opens one diamond and east passes. So you would jump to two no trump with 11 or 12 points. And now we go to the three no trump range and it's also quite easy to remember. So here you have 14 points and can add a fifth point for the club. Your partner opens a diamond you could respond to clubs and get into some long auction there, but it's far simpler. You've got stoppers in both major suits, so the easy thing to do is just bid three no trump. And typically then you would say your three no trump range is 13 to 15. This is easy to remember. Right, you just have a straightforward range. A response of one no trump to a minor shows six to nine, six to 10, that sort of range. Two no trump shows 10 to 12, 11 to 12, that sort of range. Three no trump, 13 to 15. That's a nice range. We're now going to look at two level opening bids, starting with two clubs. We'll look at a hand. You're the dealer. What call do you make? It's a strong hand, and you'd be disappointed if your partner passed. The popular modern style is to open all very strong hands with an artificial two-club bid. This frees up the opening bids of two diamonds, two hearts, and two spades for other uses, typically as weak two bids. You want to share this information with your opponents, so on the convention card, we would fill in 22 to more than 22, and that's for the opening two club bid. But there's more to it. All right, suppose you're the dealer with this hand. You only have 16 high card points, and even adding three points for length for the seven card spade suit gets you up to 19. But you'd be very disappointed if you opened one spade and everybody passed, because 
All you need from partner is a queen and maybe even less, and you'll make at least 10 tricks. So the modern style would be to open this two clubs as well. Rather than put in a specific high card range, basically the easiest thing to do is simply check that two clubs is strong. Your partner north opens two clubs, east passes. It's your call. You probably want to pass also, David. <laughs> you can't unfortunately pass your partner's two club bid because as we've just seen, it's not natural. Partner can have all sorts of hands to have opened two clubs. So you have to have some response. And the easiest thing is to bid the cheapest thing available, which is two diamonds, doesn't take up any room and partner can now describe their hand. But suppose you have this hand, a little stronger hand, and again, your partner opens two clubs, it goes past. What are you going to do this time? Well, one popular style is to also respond two diamonds. And if you play that you'd respond two diamonds with either quite a weak hand, or you could have a hand you want to be in game, but you don't have anything to say right now, then basically you're using two diamonds as a waiting bid. So you would check off the waiting box there, saying I'm waiting to see what you're going to do next, and then I might show you a weak hand or quite a good hand. It would actually be easier here if the two diamond response was placed under responses, because that's really what it is. So the strong two club bid, it's strong, and a two diamond response is waiting for more information from the opener. Now suppose partner opens two clubs, you respond two diamonds with this hand, your waiting bid, and partner now rebids two hearts. What next? Well, partner's two heart bid is still unlimited, so you're going to have to do something. Popular way of showing that you don't have a good hand at this point you don't want to bid two no trump and have to play no trump from your side, and you don't want to bid a, anything that shows a suit. So the popular style is to bid the cheaper minor, in this case, three clubs, to show that you have a very weak hand. It's artificial. If you play that way, you'd fill out cheaper minor negative under responses. So if you're playing two diamonds as waiting, it could be a weak hand or it could be quite a good hand, when you have the weak hand, now you play cheaper minor negative as your way of showing that you really don't have a good hand at all. Let's look at other two-level opening bids. You're the dealer. This is your hand. If you would open two hearts, you are with the mainstream of today's players. This is a typical weak two bid, showing a good six-card suit but not enough points to open at the one level. Since a weak two bid is a natural bid usually, showing length in the suit bid, it's not alertable. And so you would fill in five to 11, HCP means high card points, and it is natural and it's weak. Now suppose your partner does open a weak two heart bid and it goes pass, and you have a hand like this, where you're interested in game, what are you going to do? You could take a chance and jump to four hearts, but partner has a fairly wide range of five to about 11 points. So you'd like to get some further information from partner. The popular way to do that is to use two no trump as an artificial forcing bid, asking for further description from opener. So you check off two no trump is forcing as the way to handle when you want to get a further description from your partner. This time, north your partner open two diamonds and east passes. This is your hand. You get a chance to respond to a weak two diamond opening bid. So you'd like to show both your suits by bidding two spades, but you don't want your partner to pass. So you need an agreement as to whether a new suit is forcing or not after your partner opens two diamonds. And the standard agreement is that a new suit below game is forcing. That allows you to bid two spades. Your partner might rebid three diamonds or something. Now you can show your other suit three hearts. 
and find out which of your two suits partner likes. If you do that, that's sometimes referred to as a raise is the only non-forcing bid. So looked at from the sort of opposite direction. If your partner opens two hearts, the only things that aren't forcing are if you raise to three hearts or four hearts. If you bid to no trump, that's your artificial forcing. Or if you bid a new suit, that's forcing. So that's quite often abbreviated as R-O-N-F, raise only non-force. We're now at the section of the convention card that talks about other conventional calls. North opens one heart. The opponents are passing throughout. South responds one spade. North rebids two clubs. And it's South's turn to bid. So South has enough to want to be in game. They have 13 high card points and one length point for the fifth spade but it's still not clear what the best game is. You only have two cards in partner's heart suit. You only have three cards in partner's second suit. Partner didn't support your spades. And you don't have a diamond stopper to bid no trump. So how are you going to keep the auction going and get more information from partner? The popular style is to bid the fourth suit, two diamonds, even though you have only three low diamonds on this deal. It's just artificial and forcing. And so on the convention card, you would click fourth suit forcing. You have your choice of whether it's just forcing for one round. The most popular style is that it's forcing to game, but you do have to alert your opponents that that the fourth suit is artificial and forcing. And it's a comfortable bid to have when you know you want to be in a game, but you're just not sure what game. So under other conventional calls, fourth suit forcing to game is a good tool for you to have. Fourth suit forcing, as we can see, is a handy tool to have. There are other conventional calls that you could use. And if you want to, you can go to the site and look at the quick tips describing new minor forcing, two-way NMF new minor forcing, and you might want to add them to your convention card after you've read more about them. We've now come to the back of the convention card. It starts with special doubles. Supposing that your partner opens the bidding one club and East overcalls one spade, you would very much like to double that bid for penalty. If you do, however, if you double now, you would have to check that this is for penalty. You'd have to alert it. It's artificial. It doesn't come up very often, usually. So we won't use that. We'll take that away and we're not going to check that. Your partner north opens one diamond and east overcalls one spade. If the double of an overcall isn't used for penalty, it can be used for takeout. The negative means not for penalty. This is really responders double because look what's happened. You were planning to respond one heart, but the overcall, the one spade by east, got in your way. You don't have enough strength to bid a new suit at the two level, and you don't have support for partner, and a bid of one no trump is unattractive with nothing in spades. Still, you have enough to compete for the contract and would like to send this message to partner. Most partnerships use a double by responder to show exactly this type of hand held by South. Enough strength to compete and support for the two unbid suits. This form of takeout double is called a negative double and what it means is not for penalty. And we fill it in here. Let's look at another example. So suppose you hold this hand and it goes a club from your partner and East jumps to three spades, really getting in your way. You've only got 11 high card points, but you really don't want to give in to the opponent's three spade bid. So most people would also double with this hand saying, I've got enough to compete and I've got the unbid suits. So that would mean that you were playing negative doubles through three spades. And in fact, 
A popular range is to play negative doubles through four hearts. You're sitting south, and the auction starts like this. West opens one club, north doubles. East responds two clubs, and it's your call. Your partner has doubled, asking you to bid. You have four spades and four hearts. Which one should you pick? So you could just guess, but if you bid two spades, partner might have three spades and four hearts. If you bid two hearts, partner might have doubled with three hearts and four spades. Partner's asked you to choose the suit. You really like to throw it back to partner and say, you choose the suit. So when the opponent raises, a double by you can be played as what's called responsive double. Partner, let's compete, but I want you to choose the suit. I've got support for at least a couple of the suits you're talking about, so you tell me what suit you like. And if you play that, it's called a responsive double. And as with negative doubles, you can agree how high you play them through four diamonds, for example. Once it gets up higher than that, probably you're saying, I've just got a bunch of cards and they've bid too much. Your partner north opens one diamond. East passes and this is your hand you would respond one spade. West bids two hearts. Your partner passes, East passes, and it's back to you. Your partner opened the bidding showing 12 or more points, and you have got a pretty good hand, really. You have 10 points. You really don't want to let the opponents play in two hearts. So what are you going to do to keep your side in the auction? And one of the easiest things to do here is to use a double to simply say, let's compete further, partner. I don't want to let them play in two hearts. So do something. I've shown you some spades. You didn't raise right away, but if you have three of them, you can do that. Maybe you rebid the diamonds. Maybe you can show clubs and we found a club fit. Maybe you can bid no trump. So if you play a double with that sort of meaning, what you check off on the special doubles area is card showing. So your doubles aren't penalty in that type of situation at a part score level. You're basically competing with card showing. You just don't want to let them play in two hearts. What if you hold this hand when it goes a heart on your right? You'd have a perfectly normal takeout double. But let's just change the hand slightly and suppose it went a club on our right and we held this hand. Same hand, opening bid, we just don't have support for hearts. If we'd still double with this hand, not that we recommend it necessarily, but then you would have to check off that you can make a takeout double with a minimum off-shape hand. The next title on the convention card is the Simple Overcall. East opened one diamond, you're sitting south, and it's your call. With enough strength to open the bidding and a good five-card suit, you and everyone else would overcall one heart. This is a simple, non-jump overcall. East opens one diamond, and this is your hand. You have 16 high-card points, and one point for the fifth heart. Would you still overcall one heart with this particular hand? We need to now go to the convention card and share with the opponents what our range is for a simple one-level overcall. A popular common range is about 7 to 17. You can overcall with as few as 7 points at the one level. Notice it says one level overcall, 7 to about 17. If you had a stronger hand than that, if you had 18 or 19, you'd probably start with a takeout double and bid your suit. That's what you do with that type of hand. So your one level over calls are about seven to 17. You don't actually have to say what your two level over calls are. They're usually played at about 13 to 17. Mm -hmm. You need a little more to over call at the two level. And you're not going to check that it's often a four card suit or that it's a very light style. You're just saying the one level seven to 17 high card points. We're going to look at advancing an overcall. 
Suppose you are south and the auction begins with west opening the bidding one diamond and your partner north over calling one heart. East passes and it comes around to you. If partner had opened one heart, you could respond one spade and that would be a forcing call, a new suit by responder. An overcall, however, especially at the one level, can be made with as few as seven high card points. The situation is not quite the same. There is no standard agreement on how to respond to overcalls. In fact, even the terminology is open to discussion. It is becoming popular to refer to the player responding to an overcall or takeout double, not as a responder, but as an advancer. This can avoid some of the confusion. East has passed. What are we doing with the south hand? Well, we can advance one spade, but we'd be awfully unhappy if our partner passed because we have enough strength we'd like to probably get to gain. So if we'd like that to be forcing, then we would need to check under responses that a new suit is forcing. Most players, however, don't play it that way. They play it constructive, forward going, but not forcing. And some people play it's just strictly non-forcing. It says, I don't like your suit, I prefer my suit. We're going to suggest that we play it as non-forcing but constructive. So the only time partner will pass is if they've got a very minimal overcall. Otherwise, they'll try and find some suitable rebid. West opens one diamond, our partner north overcalls, east passes, and this is our hand. What call are we going to make? If partner had opened the bidding, we would make a limit raise to three hearts. However, in a competitive auction, as we've seen elsewhere, we have other options. And one of the options we have available is the qubit of the opponent's suit. So rather than raise to three hearts with this hand, if we did, we'd say that our jump raise was invitational. A more popular way is to play jump raises as weak would raise in competition with this type of hand, one heart pass, three hearts. And if that's our style, we would check that our jump raise after an overcall is weak, just the same as when the opponents interfere over an opening bid, our jump raise of partner's suit is weak. So with a good hand, we could start with a qubit. So if it goes a diamond, a heart pass, and we have a strong hand, what we do is we would qubit two diamonds to show effectively a limit raise or better of partner's suit. The next segment after the simple overcall is a jump overcall. East, our right-hand opponent, opens one club and this is our hand. What's our call? If we were the dealer, we would have opened with a weak two heart bid. However, our opponents open the bidding but the popular style these days is to show a weak hand with a good suit by jumping to two hearts. So on the convention card, we would mark that our jump over calls are weak. And it's black, so we don't have to announce that. This is the standard way of handling a hand with a weak opening bid. If your right hand opponent opens the bidding, a weak jump over call is the standard way of playing. And that would apply whether you jump to the two level or the three level. Mm -hmm. Now we come to opening preamps. You're the dealer. What's your decision with this hand? You're sitting south. So popular style these days would be to open this hand three spades. One point, we were concerned very much with the vulnerability Things like the rule of 500, we don't want to go for 800, numbers like that. But nowadays we don't worry too much about the vulnerability or the position at the table, so we would open three spades. And our preamps in that case, we would say, aren't 100% sound, they're light. We could occasionally go for a big number if we were vulnerable, but we're willing to take our chances since preamps are very effective. So that's the popular style now is to say our opening bids, these are three level and four level bids are light. 
We wouldn't say very light either because we do have a good suit on that hand. So the three slash four stands for three or four level bids. And we're going to suggest that we play them light. Now we come to the section on the direct cue bid. Now this is where we get into some very popular conventions, which we're going to suggest that you use. East opens one club. It's your call with this hand. So if you'd like to overcall two clubs, and you mean that to say, I'd rather play in clubs than have East playing in clubs, then on the convention card, you would have to check that your overcall of the opponent's minor suit was natural and that's a red box, so you would actually have to alert that because most people don't play that way anymore. If you had that type of hand, you'd probably pass, let the opponents play in clubs. If they get somewhere else, you might bid clubs later. More often, this is the type of hand you might hold when East opens one club and the bidding comes to you. You would like very much to show your partner that you have two suits. You have five spades and you have six hearts. And there is a way that you can bid both of them at the same time. This is what the qubit is commonly used for these days. And that is over the opponent's minor suit. When you qubit their minor suit, it shows both majors. And that's called the Michaels Convention. And that's what you check that your direct qubit over the opponent's minor suit is Michael's showing both major suits. Now, if your opponent were to open a heart and you had this hand, you have spades and a minor suit. So an extension of that idea is that the cubit over a major suit, one heart, two hearts, shows the other major and a minor suit. Could be clubs, could be diamonds. And that's an extension of the Michael's Convention, and that you would say, therefore, under direct qubits over a major, you check that box. So Michael's means over a minor, one club, two clubs, shows both majors. Over a major, one heart, two hearts, shows the other major, spades, and a minor. And now we're moving to the segment on no trump overcalls. In this situation, East opens with one heart, and we're south and it's our turn. Take a look, what would you do with this particular hand? You have a balanced hand with 17 high card points, a hand you would have opened one no trump. So when it goes one heart, you can overcall one no trump. An overcall of one no trump shows approximately the same as an opening bid of one no trump, but its range is actually a little higher, generally on the convention card, you show it's from about 15 to up to about 18. It could be slightly stronger because the opponent has opened the bidding. There's a box right after that says systems on. And that means that after a one no trump over call, in this situation, for example, West opens one diamond and your partner North over calls one no trump. East passes. This hand isn't very strong, but we do want to come into the bidding, and this is how we do it. If we play transfer bids over one no trump openings, we can also play them when our partner overcalls a no trump. So with this hand, we could bid two diamonds, asking our partner to bid two hearts. So if we have this agreement with partner, then we would check the box that says our systems are on. That means we play the same methods we would play over a one no trump opening bid. So basically we have Stamen, Jacoby transfers. The next part is about balancing no trump over calls. Now here, West opens with one heart, North passes, East passes, and the bidding comes to us. Here we have only 13 points and a balanced hand, but we do have stoppers in the opponent's suit. We could just pass and defend one heart, but our partner could have a balanced hand and couldn't come in with an overcall or a takeout double. And we might belong in game. In the balancing position, we usually can bid with about three fewer points than in the direct position. 
and that applies with a no trump overcall as well. So here we might well overcall one no trump in the balancing position. So when we look at the convention card in the balancing position, it says that our no trump overcall is about 12 to 15. So about three points less than in the direct position. And that's not alertable. It's in black. Yeah. Standard bidding. Right. Almost standard unknown bidding, really. Right. There may be some variations on that depending on whether the opening bid was a major or minor, but this is a good enough idea that it's a lighter range when you're in the balancing position. This time there's a one diamond opening bid by East and it's South Call. What's your decision? Two no Trump. And this, rightly so, is called the unusual two no Trump bid. And we have to share this with our opponents that when we bid two no Trump after East one diamond call, it isn't natural. At one time it showed both minors, but the popular modern agreement is that it shows the two lower unbid suits. So in this case, it's gone a diamond. The two lower ranking unbid suits are hearts and clubs. So we can show them both at once. It's rather like the Michaels cue bid. There's a way to show two suits at once by bidding two no trump. That's the unusual two no trump. And it's in black, another one of those conventions that is considered pretty much standard. Don't need to alert. The next section that we're going to look at on the convention card is our defense when the opponents open one no trump. You'll notice there are two columns of lines here with a little versus at the top. Sometimes we can vary our defense against the opponent's no trump depending on whether they play a weak no trump or a strong no trump. But typically we just agree on one method. Suppose we have a hand like this and the opponents open one no trump. It's a balanced hand with 13 points. We would have opened the bidding a heart, but it's fairly dangerous to come in when our right hand opponent has shown 15 to 17 points. So we typically don't come into the auction when we have a balanced hand. It's usually best just to pass and defend. But suppose we have a two-suited hand like this, where we have both major suits. Now it's much more reasonable to come into the auction, even though we have fewer points, because the odds favor our partner having a fit for at least one of our major suits, provided we can tell them we have both major suits and get them to choose. There are many conventions that can be used to do this. One of the simplest is to use two clubs to show both major suits. That's called the Landy Convention. And if we were to play that, we'd mark on our card that two clubs shows hearts and spades. There are many much more complicated versions. If we played Capaletti, we'd be saying that two clubs shows a one-suited hand. Two diamonds is the suit, is the bid that shows hearts and spades. Two hearts shows hearts and a minor. Two spades shows spades and a minor, and double is for penalty. And you and your partner have to agree on whether you play the same defense, whether they are opening a weak no trump or a strong no trump. For the most part, we'll just leave this blank and let you decide with your partner how you'd like to defend when the opponents open one no trump. The next segment on the convention card is titled, Over the Opponents Take Out Double. North opens one heart and East doubles. As South, it's our call. If East had passed, we would have just responded two clubs, forcing and perhaps forcing the game if that's our style. When the opponent doubles, we have other choices. And one of the choices we have is the redouble. And the redouble is generally used when we have any hand with about 10 or more high card points. And we might have many things in mind when we redouble, one of them being that we might plan to double the opponents if they bid clubs, for example, because they're gonna to have to bid something having made a takeout double. And our partner might join in the fun too. If they bid spades, our partner may be able to double that and we'd be happy to defend. So the redouble is generally what we do 
with a good hand when the opponents make a takeout double. With this hand, again, north opens with one diamond and east doubles. It's our call. With this hand, we have 10 points, which would be enough to redouble, except it would be a little dangerous because we have a fit with diamonds and we might miss our heart fit if they compete in spades and we don't show the hearts right now. So most players would probably respond one heart, even though they could have redoubled. And on the convention card, you would check off that a new suit response is forcing at the one level. North is a dealer and opens one diamond. East doubles. South does not have 10 high card points. What's East's call? A lot of players with this type of hand would bid two clubs. From their failure to redouble, their telling partner they have a good club suit, but they don't have 10 or more high card points. So that lets them get the club suit in despite the opponent's double and they're in a competitive auction. That, in fact, is very standard, so standard that it's not really mentioned under the opponent's takeout double. It's assumed that a new suit is not forcing, and only if a new suit were forcing would you check that a new suit at the two level was forcing. This time north opens one diamond, east doubles. Again, we don't have enough to redouble. It's our call. Some players would jump to two spades with this hand. If that's the style that the partnership has agreed on, then you would check that a jump shift when the opponents make a takeout double is weak. How about this hand when it goes a heart double? You have a fit with your partner's hand, but only four high card points plus three dummy points for the singleton spade. So what can you do with this? A lot of players would jump to three hearts with this hand as a weak bid, and you'll notice there's nothing on the card to indicate that. That's assumed to be standard, unalertable. So if the opponents double, your partner opens a heart and they double and you jump to three hearts or four hearts, that's assumed to be weak. So what if you have a hand like this? With this example, north opens one heart and east again doubles. This time you do have 10 high card points, but do you make a redouble, or is there something else that we might think of? It's your call. The problem with redoubling with this type of hand is that it's a competitive auction, and the opponents might bid spades, and by the time the auction comes back to you, the auction might be at two or three spades, and you haven't had a chance to show your heart fit. So a popular agreement here is that when the opponents double over your partner's opening suit bid, a jump to two no trump is artificial and shows a limit raise or better in partner's suit. And that allows you to treat the jump to the three level as weak. If you play that, that's marked under two no trump over both majors and minors. If you check that, the limit plus means you play a limit raise or better in partner's suit over the opponent's double. So you would mark that under the column that says limit plus against both majors and minors, two no trump shows a limit raise or better. This is often called Dormer, Jordan, or Truscott, but it's fairly popular. Some people just play it shows a limit raise, and some people play it's weak, but whatever it is that you and your partner agree, you have to alert the two no trump bid when it comes up. The next segment of the convention card deals with the opening preamps and what a double is. East opens two hearts and it's your call. Popular approach would be that you would double for takeout here, just as you would double over one heart. So a double over two hearts is also for takeout. The important part though is how high does this apply? Suppose they open four hearts. What would your double mean then? And if you would still double meaning it for takeout, then what you have to do is indicate on the card that when the opponents preempt, your double is takeout through, let's say, four hearts. If they bid four spades or something like that, 
then you can start playing that the double is for penalty. So you do need to agree on the level. And now we come to slam conventions. Gerber, Forno Trump, Blackwood, Roman Keycard Blackwood, 1430. Let's take a closer look. North opens one no trump and east passes. What's your call? You have 16 points in a balanced hand. What you would respond with this hand is four no trump. Now four no trump isn't the Blackwood convention when your partner opens one no trump. It's a quantitative raise. Partner can pass with a minimum or carry on to slam with a maximum. So suppose you have this hand where your partner opens a no trump and you really do want to know how many aces your partner has. The way you ask over one no trump is you bid four clubs. This is the Gerber convention. So you would check off Gerber under slam bidding. In this example, partner opens one spade and east passes. We make a limit raise to three spades and west passes. And now our partner bids four no trump. East passes, it's our call. If we would respond five hearts to show two aces, then basically we're playing standard Blackwood. So we just check off that we're playing Blackwood. There are lots of variations that we could play, Roman key card, 1430. But for now, we'll just settle that four no trump when a suit's been agreed is the Blackwood Convention. As we come to the last part of the convention card, we're going to look at leads. David's going to take you through these two charts and tell you what you should circle and what it means. So here's David. Suppose the auction goes one no trump by east, we pass, three no trump by west, and everybody passes. We're on lead. What are we going to lead from this hand? Well, one of the oldest maxim is Fourths from longest and strongest. So most of us would lead the five of hearts, our fourth best. So if we look at the area in leads down under length leads, fourth best versus no trump, we check that one off. Now suppose we had this hand and our suit wasn't quite so good and it went one no pass, three no pass, pass, and we decide to lead a heart. And suppose we decide here we'd lead fourth best. Now, if we were to look at the leads on the right-hand side at the top there, on the very right, it already has filled out by default that we would lead high from four small cards. So if we would still lead fourth best, then we would need to circle that. And that's probably what we do unless we have some specific agreement with partner to lead high from four small cards. Suppose we have this hand when it goes one no, three no, all pass. Now we're not going to lead fourth best because we have a sequence. We're going to lead the top of the touching honors when we have a three card sequence. And what if we had this holding? We have queen, ten, nine. That's a broken sequence. And the standard lead from that is the ten. If we look at the convention card, you'll notice that most of those are already marked in black. The king from the king, queen, jack, the queen from the queen, jack, ten, the 10 from the Queen 10 9. However, there's a couple of areas you might want to discuss with your partner. One of them is what would you lead if it went 1 no pass, 3 no all pass, and you held this hand? There'd be a disagreement among some partnerships as to whether you would lead the ace or the king. So if you'd lead the ace and you would look at this area and notice that it's the king that by default is there. So you would need to circle that you lead the ace from a suit headed by the ace-king. Similarly, if you have a suit headed by the king-queen-10-9, the card previously marked is the queen. However, if you just lead the king top of the touching cards, then you would need to circle it. That was your agreement. Let's look at leads against suits. Suppose it went one heart, pass, two hearts, pass, pass and we had to lead from this hand, we'd probably lead a diamond since we don't want to lead from our aces and we don't want to lead a trump. If we're leading a diamond, we'd probably pick the fourth best if that's our agreement. So now, down under length leads, we'd mark that we also lead fourth best 
against suits as well as no trump. It went one heart pass, two hearts pass, pass, and we had to lead from this hand. We'd probably lead our sequence, the ace-king, and we'd probably lead the ace. On the convention card, the ace isn't marked because some people lead the king from ace-king, so we would circle the ace as what we normally lead from the ace-king. Otherwise, most of the sequences are exactly what we'd lead against no trump. Here is a very short segment on the convention card. It's the primary signal two partners leads. There are three choices, attitude, count, and suit preference. So we would check attitude because that's the most common. And now we come to defensive carding and we'll turn it back to David. This is the last segment on the card. So here things are fairly normal we would probably just check that we play standard carding against suits and against no trump. So what that basically means is we play, if we like the suit partner led, we play a high card as a nice attitude signal. If we're giving count, we play high low is standard. If we're giving a suit preference signal, a high card shows a preference for the highest ranking suit, and a low card for the lowest ranking suit. So if we're playing that way, and most people do, those are standard signals, and that's all we need to fill out in this part of the card. 